Hello people, I'm Vito, and welcome back to the World of Light with Rubberlink. Hello. So where we left off, we beat Rathagal, or I think Rathagal, was it? Something like that. The dragon thing, and we also got Isabel, who's not going to be used at all. <laughs> but not out of hatred like Olimar. <laughs> Alright, so would you... Hmm... I guess we could head to the space area if you want. That's why I was planning. Uh, right, I have to take the the Great Fox. First, what's this? Ashley. Hazard assist trophies. Have you even tried this one? I don't know, but I don't like it already. Because <laughs> I don't think you have. I'm still underpowered. Or at least it's not by too much. Yeah, but... You know what? Hold is, on. Is it Kong time? No, not yet. It's bounty hunting time. Very well. Aw, it's a tiny little Ridley. What? Uh, okay. That's a little weird. Oh, and it hurts me. And it slows me down. And it makes me invisible. What the? It, Jesus. Oh, and of course, there's a map. Oh my... I can't deal with the map hazards and this at the same time. Jeez. <laughs> Wait, when was... The... Wait. It's an actual character? What? I thought it was an assist trophy. It's both because it's a me sword fighter. I didn't even notice the switch. Like, I want to commentate, but I don't want to distract you. Alright, there's one. Let me give you a slap before I throw you. Nice. There's the other. Alright. Now you may talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for your permission. Um, oh. I was just thinking of other creative games that I think I forgot to mention last time I mentioned them. Uh, have you played Universe Sandbox? No, I have not. But I have seen a little bit of it can't you like pretty much spawn like black holes inside the earth or anything really yeah pretty much <laughs> you just mess around with the solar system create your own solar system if you wish place planets moons whatever it's pretty fun you can also like add material by shooting it at stuff hmm so <laughs> i I don't know if it would technically... Oh, Trace. Oh. I don't know if it would technically make sense, but I remember one thing I tried doing was, like, making a black hole out of every material. But I think at the point where they become a star, that kind of causes them to become certain materials. Yeah, like, I imagine you can't have a, a hydrogen black hole. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I've technically kind of tried, and I guess... By the way, the game is programmed, it might still be considered one, but I don't think that's how it would really work. You can also make one out of completely water. <laughs> <laughs> it's a water hole. Or a water sun. <laughs> it's like you thought a plant made out of water was weird. Imagine orbiting a sun made out of water. Sounds like a Star Trek episode. <laughs> That is kind of a strange thing. It's like, <laughs> this water is so hot, yet still somehow 
kind of liquid looking that it's, you know, emitting light. <laughs> Alright. So Trace is the, uh, the sniper in Metroid Prime Hunters. And uh, when he stands still, he can become invisible. Oh yeah, there's his invisibility. You can't hurt me now. <laughs> you can't hurt me, my back is turned. <laughs> this is actually stupid. Why didn't I think of this before? Oh, oh there it goes. That's why. Nice. <laughs> Good going, Chase. Your timing is impeccable. Uh, roll straight into the fully charged... Um, charge beam? Yeah. Why do I always forget that one? <laughs> I keep wanting to say, like, plasma. Ah, Jody Summer from uh, F-Zero. Yep, the one we had to save in that long tunnel yeah. with all the closing doors. Actually... Look at the graphics of that, of the, her machine behind her, the white cat, and that looks specifically like GX. Yep. Also the, the character model, that's also how she looked in GX. Okay, that I couldn't remember for sure. Although I always thought the outfit looked a little weird. Like, uh, you know, that's supposed to go under the uniform. <laughs> it's not outerwear, it's underwear, jeez. Uh, also, have you ever played uh, Goat Simulator? No, but I've watched a bit of gameplay about it. It seems to be a... You play a goat and you just kind of go around and destroy... Or, well, you just kind of ruin everyone's day. Yeah, you just kind of mess around with the physics. I remember... I think a way you could kind of break the game was I think if you licked a vehicle that was moving so you were like attached to it and then it it goes through this tunnel and then I think it's supposed to like disappear after it goes into this tunnel so you know it can spawn on the other side again but as it does that you just go absolutely crazy and get launched I think if nice. I remember correctly <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of fun to be had just messing around with that how oh, great zero suit Samus with increased move speed what, Falcon, why are you here? To save her from the uh, exploding tunnel, remember? Why, why do you look... Like, color scheme-wise, why do you look more like her than... Zero Suit Sam? Eh, whatever. You'll die just the same, regardless of your color. Wow. I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Kind of didn't expect it to be that over that early. <laughs> Also, have you played Spore? Yes. I feel like I've... I almost always get to the space stage in Spore, and then it, for some reason I just stop playing it, and I've never actually beaten it. Me neither, but I have a reason. And it's because... Like, the further along I get, like, it pretty much doesn't happen in the, in the cell stage. But once I get to the, you know, animal stage... Creature. Creature. I notice that it it keeps crashing. Hmm. And it crashes more when I'm in the primitive stage. Tribal. Tribal. And even more when I'm in the... Civilization. Civilization. And I can't play for more than like five minutes in the space stage without it crashing. I don't and it's happened on like two separate computers. I don't think I've ever had that problem, but... So I've never been able to beat it. Huh. Sorry, I got a little frustrated there, because I actually enjoy the game for everything except that. Yeah. I remember one of the things I liked doing was trying to create things like hydralisks. <laughs> for some reason, I find hydralisks very cool. I think I've mentioned that already. Yeah, there are some things that I think are kind of cool that most people probably are just like, okay, so what? Galaxy Man? Hmm. Probably should have looked at it first. It said it was from Mega Man. Ah. Did that black hole just swallow a black hole? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's black holeception. Huh. 
All right, you just stay there and eat it. <laughs> Easy enough. Oh. That actually could be nice. Hmm. The thing is, <laughs> in Spore, there's not a whole lot of uh, menacing looking eyes or anything like that. <laughs> so it's like the closest thing you can have is like maybe almost like like there are slit eyes. Yeah, there are a few, but mm, even those kind of kind of look odd with the cartoony ishness of yeah. Spore. Uh, the Wolfen. But yeah, like hydralisks are hydralisks usually have like reddish glowing eyes that are all like just one color. I don't think Spore has anything like that, or at least not without DLC or something. I never actually bothered to look at Hydralisk's eyes. Hmm. Probably because I'm usually too busy pumping out more Marines. <laughs> Just speaking of, uh, I guess, RTS games again. So I, I recently got the Dawn of War series because it was on sale and... Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of disappointed by it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I accept responsibility for uh, dragging you into a game with me and my friends before you even got to play the tutorial. So, uh... I mean, I got a pretty good grasp of how a lot of it works, I think, but it does seem strange. It doesn't... I'm not sure exactly how to describe everything that I think is wrong with it, but uh, for one thing, the the resource points don't even make sense. The requisition or whatever. Oh, you control this point, so you can magically get more guys. <laughs> it's like normally it's like you get resources that you're actually using to build more things, you know. I uh, guess. Hmm. I mean, but unless... the factions are so different that how would you rationalize that they all benefit from the same point? In their own way. I mean, if it's just building material, I mean, anyone can build from it, right? Um, you... hmm. Well, thing is, uh, they kind of all use different materials. Because uh, you don't really... You still don't really know much about... Uh, the story, yeah, I don't. The universe itself. Admittedly, I do not. Like, uh, you know the orcs... Structures all look like they're made out of scrap metal and wood. No, nope, because I didn't look. Well, they are. <clears throat> because orcs literally just... If they think it can be done, guess what? It can be done. Wow, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> Some orc watching this video is like, you know what? I think he should die. <laughs> the... I also looked through some of the reviews, and I think I looked through the reviews of the base one and then Dark Crusade. I didn't check the other two, but I think there were actually some reviews on Dark Crusade that said there were, like, balancing issues or something. Hmm. I'm not sure. But, um... Yeah, I played a bit of Space Marines, Necron, and once as Imperial Guard, I think. That was about it. Um... Yeah, also with the enemy AI, it's like, I can understand if an AI goes rush, but I I was starting to get the hang of how the basics worked, and the enemy was still having, like, two entire squads of units in my base before I could produce one. To be fair, I think we were hitting, going against, like, harder AIs, though, because, this you know, is, we... This is even when we were going against the standard, they were still doing it. Oh, wow. But... But when that when it happens to that degree, it's like the only way they should be able to do that is if they're actually getting like cheat benefits. Yeah, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. It it felt like like that day in general felt kind of bad for like just all those matches felt kind of bad. <laughs> another thing is it felt like you know one squad against another squad. No matter what I did, my squad was always losing against the enemy squad, even if I was fully upgraded. Mm. It's like. Normally you get a feel for, you know, okay, I should be able to win this because I have more units, I have better units, whatever. In Dawn of War, Darker Sage, it's like, okay, I have better units, 
but I'm still losing for some reason, and I don't know why. Hmm. So that that also <laughs> put a damper on the situation. The only thing I could say is maybe, like, play the tutorial and play a bit of it by yourself. Maybe go through the one or two of the campaigns hmm. to, you know, kind of fleshing out your experience, I guess. Yeah. Fleshing. Flesh out, yeah. Yeah, but that's up to you. Because I wonder if maybe it's that morale thing you mentioned, the unit morale. Because I, I don't even know how that really works exactly. Okay. If the unit loses morale, they still work the same, but they deal like a tenth of the damage they normally do. That, that may have been the problem. Like, they just do almost nothing. Yeah, that's, that's stupid. <laughs> your morale does not affect <laughs> the speed at which your bullet travels, okay? <laughs> Maybe it's like your, their accuracy is reduced because, you know, they're demoralized, but... <sighs> do, the, do the Necrons have morale? Yes, but the Necrons are also, like, some of the hardest to demoralize. Hmm. Also, another thing was... It felt like battles take forever. Like, nothing takes damage at an expected rate. It's always like, you're, these armies can be like, <laughs> fighting each other for like, I don't I don't know exactly how long, but it's like they just keep shooting at each other and it takes forever for it to actually resolve, for things to actually start dying. Hmm. It feels like the damage scaling is too low. Yeah, kind of. I will admit it also may be quite noticeable against buildings if you don't have like the right upgrades deal with buildings they can take like forever yeah but I'll be honest I also even if I don't you don't play the game that much I kind of still want you to at least experience it so you can get a slightly better feel for the warmer 40k universe in general so <laughs> I can share more memes and jokes about it <laughs> Yeah, also one of those comments I saw, I don't know if it's true or not, but they accused someone of, like, someone who worked on StarCraft of kind of stealing from Warhammer. And I guess if you, you know, compare, like, a Terran Marine to a Space Marine, I guess that might be kind of true. I'm not sure. Because mm. I don't know how much, you know. To be fair, the whole concept of, you know, Space Soldier with, you know giant bulky armor and big gun. Yeah, it's kind of generic. Hmm. Oh, an Aperoid. From Star Fox Assault, which we might play in the future. I believe I know. Isn't that like the first Aperoid boss you fight? I believe it is. Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> the enemy is metal and has better jumping power? Hmm. Why has my jump power decreased? I don't remember jumping aperoids. I know, no, this one didn't jump. It flew. Uh, you know, yeah, let's just murder it. <laughs> but yeah, um, back to 40k. <laughs> like, okay. You might have heard me or WX78, or probably not because you can only hear my end of the conversation <laughs> most of the time. Ow. Um, I do usually play the Imperial Guard, but I still love the Orcs. Not for their play style, just for their personality. <laughs> like, green is best and Orcs is made for fighting. Like, they're just... They're simple-minded, <laughs> but they're happy. Like, everyone else is upset and, you know, depressed because of the constant state of war. And the Orcs are just like, dude, this is heaven. <laughs> they literally just live to fight. And the fact that things come true if they believe enough. Like, if you paint something red, it'll go faster. Because they believe that's how it works. So that's how it works. Hmm. Which is why orc technology works. Even though it's just like pieces of metal cobbled together. Like if you told an orc 
that this L-shaped pipe was a gun, he could use it and it would shoot. <laughs> like, it's just so stupid. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. I mean, it can be funny, but... Yeah. <laughs> well, of course, it's also kind of serious because that means they're influencing the warp, which is kind of a whole nother thing. <laughs> Falco. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think, like, another thing is, like, from what I saw, like, of the previews of, like, the cinematics they made for the games, I don't know if I like the style of it as much as I like other things. Like, I really like Halo in terms of the way it looks. You know, the design of everything looks like it, you know, takes itself seriously enough. Right. Um... That's one of the things I didn't quite like as much about Overwatch in terms of the design is it looked a little bit comic-y. True. But I, but I do like the way Overwatch plays. Generally, Warhammer 40k kind of looks realistic, I think. Hmm. And again, it kind of also depends on what faction you're going for. And maybe the game itself, but actually, no, I have a couple other Warhammer games that are, uh, have a similar like art style. Then again, it's also... Dawn of War is actually kind of an older game. Yeah, I was wondering if maybe that played into it is just because of how old it was. Hmm. So, so far, my opinion of Warhammer 40k is kind of still kind of mixed. I, I, under, I understand that. It's not set in stone or anything. Yeah. I still urge you to, you know, try to experience it a bit more, but if you still don't end up liking it, that's fine. At least you can say you tried it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And now we have Falco. How do I fly this thing? You don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I don't know why it says take your strongest team against. I think that's like a third of my spirit power. <laughs> Clearly, I have a. Wow. Clearly, they have something up their sleeves. <laughs> well, if they're technically little stars, I mean, who knows? They could go supernova. <laughs> just <laughs> just end everything. <laughs> they just explode and the game shuts down. Whoops. Ready? Oh, no. They have my powers now. <laughs> it's like, wait a second. I don't think Lumas do that. <laughs> They sure have evolved. I don't need the invincibility. I just don't want them to have it. Well, back on the topic of some other creative games. I don't know if I mentioned, but I also play a lot of BeamNG.Drive, which is just a, a car simulation game with like pretty realistic physics and destruction and deformation of the actual cars themselves. Hmm. It's pretty fun. Like actual fender bending and um... Yep. Hmm. Okay, the double final smash thing is stupid. <laughs> but, but I'm still gonna use it. Yeah, but appreciated. Yes. <gasps> I'm not quite honorable enough to not take advantage of it. Magolore? <laughs> Something from Kirby. Hmm. Hey, there is, there's a mod in Beeman G. Drive that adds a jet with heat-seeking missiles. <laughs> which is pretty fun. <laughs> so I assume weapons normally aren't in the game. Yeah, not usually. But I mean... You can make them in it, apparently. Huh. So you can have, like, a car somewhere on the surface driving along. Because it also has, like, cruise control and also, like, AI control mm -hmm. that you can activate. So you could just have a car going and then you switch to your jet, fire a missile. I think you can all either have the camera follow the missile or you can just switch to the car that is targeting and just watch it get blown to pieces. Okay, there's... 
a YouTube like series of videos. I I can't remember the creator's name, but um, basically it's just these ridiculous instructions. Like the first video I watched was um, like how to counter some sort of chess gambit, and it starts off pretty normal, like uh, you know, explains you know what to do with. If your opponent moves pawn this to there, and you move your knight here. Ah, but now... The, you've already foiled the enemy's plan, because now you can launch an intercontinental ballistic missile. <laughs> and it just shows like a simple physics engine. Of like a missile just crashing through the chess table. <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll have to find it. And... There was... A more recent video of like how to deal with um like roundabouts in driving hmm. and it just mentions like just at the end it's just like destroy the place with you know carpet bombing or something <laughs> like it's just like hmm yes also reminds you of I think there was a clip I saw of someone I think someone sent a clip to a VTuber it's some person explaining something about missile missiles and how they do their trajectory or something like how they home into a place or something like that. It's like it takes the knowledge of where it is and divides it from where it isn't or something like that. It's really <laughs> confusing sounding. <laughs> like because the missile knows where it isn't. Therefore it knows where it is. Something like that. But it's just really long and rambly and <laughs> It's like really incomprehensible. Sounds familiar. Huh. Anyways, this looks like a tough fight. It's like... Yeah, it's definitely a bit above me. What is it? Um... Gino. Super Mario RPG. Hmm. Which I have not actually played. Which I do not even know the existence of. I'm not sure, but I feel like I've heard of this character also being requested as a fighter. Like, not quite as much as L Waluigi, perhaps, but somewhat. Hmm. I'm not sure. Well. I think... Let's see if our winning streak of Samus is to be broken or not. <laughs> I think a friend might know about this character. Hmm. Maybe it's the angle, but he looks weird. With the red ribbon. Hmm, I think I think the most annoying yeah. I annoying. Think <laughs> I think the most annoying part of this fight is probably going to be that timer. Oh, uh, yeah. I actually forgot about that. Because I do seem to Ow. vaguely remember this fight. I think that was the biggest problem. Blam you. And blam you. <laughs> All three of you, in fact. Oh, that's pretty Why good. do you get an extra life as Peach? <laughs> and she... Oh, come on. Now I see what you mean by uh, the timer being an issue. Yeah. <laughs> My god. Mario, stop beating me up. I'm not Bowser. Ooh. Ow. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's exactly extra lives or if it's just they're taking up the free slots once they're finally available because there's not enough slots for everyone to be on the screen at once. Mm. Yeah, it's tough. I think I'll try again in the next episode. All right. Because it's about time to end it. Right? Yep. Okay. I was just going to ask, uh, have you played Slime Rancher? No. I haven't played it recently, but... I don't think I even own it. Oh, well, we'll talk more later. <laughs> so we'll see you guys next time. Goodbye for now. Goodbye.